Hey T heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, I get to unveil a T type that we have been trying to release for the past couple of years. This is a white tea cake, but this is a white tea cake not from Fujian, but from Yunnan province. Now, for us, white tea is because of its relatively simplistic processing, not easy, but simplistic processing style, it very much has the ability to express terroir in a very direct way because there's less processing steps where you can manipulate the flavor. And for that reason, we really wanted to find a white tea that we could press into a cake that expressed the terroir of Yunnan province, one of our favorite areas and very terroir heavy. What I mean by that is it is very much uh, an area that because of its age, because of the fact that the indigenous people have been um, cultivating tea in this area for, for many, many, many centuries, it just has this very old world feel about it. And you can really taste the intricacies that terroir makes up in that area. So what we wanted to do was to make a white tea cake from traditionally poor areas and traditionally poor producing trees. This comes from Jingmai, one of our most favorite mountain areas in Yunnan because of its bright, high, uplifting aroma. This is Flower Crane. Flower Crane Jingmai White 2020 from tea trees estimated at about 100 year old. So this is not Gushu. It would be very difficult to get Gushu white tea because obviously all of the Gushu is being used to make pua. But we managed to get some Dashu, some old white tea tree material from the ancient forests of Jingmai. Here we go, flower crane. I hope that you like the cover because this is a new style for us, a new style tea, Yunnan fresh white tea cakes. We've decided to go for a different look. Obviously it's a, it's a sort of abstract collage made up from traditional Chinese paper cuts. So the idea of this old area, Yunnan, this very traditional terroir based area with such a long history of tea making, but sort of switched up and made into something that's a little bit new and a little bit abstract. So I hope you like it. This is, uh, I really like it. I think it's got a very striking look to it. Flower crane, let's quickly scope this tea. This is March 2020, so spring pickings, even though it's being made into a white tea, we still managed to get spring pickings of this tea. So March 2020, cultivar, we put it down as the Da Ye Zhong, although it may be more sort of medium leaf, so the Zhong Xiao Ye Zhong, but Da Ye Zhong is just sort of a catch-all for these larger leaf tea varieties. The origin, this is from Jingmai in Yunnan in China. Picking and processing, this is larger leaf picking than your pua picking. So this will be similar to like a shomei picking. We'll see when we open it up. Um, and then it's gonna go through white tea processing, which is essentially combining the wilting and drying and fixing all in one long process. So you're basically um, fixing the leaf through the uh, drying of the leaf. So once the leaf reaches a certain level of uh, moisture content where it drops below a certain level, the activity of the leaf slows down very, very much to, to a very, very slow speed. But of course it's still active and that means that this tea is very suitable for aging. So I highly recommend picking up a cake and aging it as well because yeah, it's a hundred year old tea trees from Yunnan. And uh, I, I wonder what that's gonna taste like in uh, five to 10 years. I'm, I think it's gonna be something special. So, um, so that's the processing. There is sun withering in this, so we've managed to get um, these leaves uh, under the sun for a, a proportion of that time, just to really sort of accentuate the terpene levels um, to get that sun wilting. That full spectrum light really makes a difference to boosting up the, the terpenes and aromatics of the tea. Elevation on this is about 1,600 meters. Right, let's open this cake up and see what the leaves look like. There you go. Look at that. So as I said, similar to, I would say, a shomei style picking. So there are some buds here you can see, but obviously larger leaf, obviously because of the fact that this is from larger leaf tea trees, the leaves are gonna look even bigger 
than with Shomei because the teas from Fujian area are slightly smaller leaf than the Daya Jong varieties. But you can see a fair amount of buds, sort of interesting sort of caramel, orange caramel, a bit of sort of um, like a raisin black brown or like the, the, like the dark crust of sourdough bread sort of black browns and these sort of antique silver and slightly sort of tarnished silver buds. Looking very, very nice. Let's uh, dive in. It'll be a very easy tea to break up because of the large leaf. So I'm going to move this to the side. And we'll see how these leaves look. Gnarly looking leaves, but that's what you'd expect. Now, I would not be afraid of these large leaves breaking them a little bit because they're gonna require a little bit more energy to extract. So you don't want sort of an uneven brew. So don't be frightened with white tea, I would say, of you know, taking these large leaves and just sort of making them a little bit even. I think that that's probably enough, but let me just break off a bit more. I can always put it back if it's not necessary. I reckon with these leaves, you want a fair amount, but sort of, um, I think I wrote on the packaging, where did I write? 3.5 grams, I did 3.5 grams, but Looking at these leaves, I would say you're probably looking for maybe a bit more, maybe four, maybe even five grams because of the fact that this is um, larger leaf white tea. Um, it's gonna require a lot more for extraction. Okay, now let's get our blue guy one. Warm it up. Very, very, very excited to release this tea. It's been sort of a work in progress for a couple of years we wanted to get a, a white tea because you get white teas obviously from Yunnan already uh, Moonlight White, Yue Guangbai is, is one classic um, but you're also getting like silver needles being made in Yunnan as well but what we wanted was really leaves and pickings that were from older tea trees, from our favorite mountain areas, and um, from tea trees which are normally used to make pu'er tea. Let's put this by our side so we can still see it. Okay, here we go. Flower Crane, 2020 white. Let's see what it smells like. Very... Um, so when I said before that terroir um, is really expressed in all teas, but with white tea, because of its simple processing, because of this very sort of elongated withering to drying phase where there's not much processing going on. So we're not adding flavor through roasting. We're not adding flavor through the shaching process. We're not ad even adding flavor through a rolling process. This is very, very simple processing complex in its sort of difficulty to, to get the right level of oxidation and the smells coming off here are so terroir heavy, very, very fruity, extremely fruity, like cherry, um, cherry fruit and apples. And it's got that sweetened, like apple cider vinegar or kombucha. So it's got this acidity, this bright acidity, like you're smelling um, a kombucha, but with a lot more, um, sweetness to it, cherries, apples, and marzipan may be a bit too nutty. So Fuding and Fujian is obviously very well known for their teas because of that very nutty taste or profile. And I don't expect this to, well, I hope it's not because I, I want this to stand on its own as being very unique. I don't expect this uh, Jingmai White to be extremely nutty. It's there as a sort of very, very sweet frangipani sort of marzipan note, um, but predominant, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. 
predominance on the dry leaf, I need to calm down, is um, fruits, cherries, apples, and sort of sweetened apple cider vinegar. So very, very sweet. But this is something else. Now, I need to sort of get myself, get my head around this smell. Um, it's like milk, sweetened milk, like condensed milk or, um, no, that's too sticky. Oh, this is amazing, this smell. Like a spiced cardamom milk, maybe like a milk uh, kulfi, you know, those um, where it's not actually condensed milk, it's like a quite simple milk, but it's been spiced and sweetened. Oh, amazing, and there's a, a touch of there's still that marzipan there. So marzipan's milks, like I want to say cardamom, pistachio, but then I'm getting those cherries and fresh pears. Oh, really, really very, very aromatic. The Jingmai is just coming through even more than in the Pua tea. Interesting, it's sort of that white tea has just really brought out that Jingmai fruitiness, like yeah, pears, fresh, fresh pears, very, very fragrant, fresh pears. I could spend a long time sniffing those leaves. Um, I'm brewing with uh, just under boiling water. I think on the brewing instructions, I wrote 95 degrees. Again, I think judging by the leaves, so I'm just trying to react to what I'm seeing a little bit. I would say probably that's the minimum temperature. Let's put it that way. We're going to brew for 25 seconds. These kinds of teas, they're very hardy. They can take quite hot water because of the fact that they haven't been rolled. So the, the, the outer membrane of the leaf is sort of still intact. And so you need to push it a bit harder to, to extract. And that means you can get many, many, many brews out of it and including that powerhouse boiled brew at the end, which obviously we will be testing with this tea when I have more sessions of it. Okay. I just need to smell that again. Oh, it's so complex. Okay, let's try and break it apart. Pears for sure. Vanilla is there. Um, a slight, yeah, like, um, like you've taken some pine wood. So this foresty note, which you would never get in Fujian white tea because of the area, it's, it's not the same thing. This Yunnan is these hot, humid forests and it's this woodsy, resinous note, like as if I've cut some cedar, I've cut some pine and it's just, it's just been freshly cut and it's very, very pungent. Um, and frangipan, very sweet frangipan, spiced milk, kulfi, Amazing. I'm going to show you the color in this cup. So it's like a, a dusky orange color to it. Right, here we go. I need to calm down. It's very early here. It's about eight o'clock in the morning. I woke up at uh, five o'clock because of my daughter here in London. And uh, yeah, so an, an early start in London for me. And what a way to start. Mmm, okay. That incense cedar is coming through. All of the notes that I talked about on the smell are also appearing on the tongue. A combination of milky, but like light milkiness, like a milk, like milk chews, I don't know, like milk candies, like very sort of sweet, milky, spiced milky, but light still, not cream, not butter. And 
then sort of incense cedar. You know, if you get really high quality pencils made out of incense cedar, which is a type of very fragrant cedar, and you just, you know, shave that pencil, you're getting that, that very sort of aromatic smell. And then fruits. And I still want to say cherries, like cherry candies. So not fresh cherries, but almost moving into cherry cough sweets, but not. It's not that medicinal. <clears throat> but those hard cherry candies, not sour cherry, just straight ahead cherry candies, cherry hard boiled candy sweets. Mm. Wow. Texture on it is medium thick, moving to thick. And I think that if you play with the temperatures and the um, brewing time, you can probably uh, work with the texture, but I would class it now at about medium thick, which is quite impressive considering it's the first infusion with boiling water. Mm. It's gonna be interesting to see what the effect of this tea is. So I'm gonna drink through a few infusions and let you know in this video. Because obviously with um, the white teas, the aged white teas, they um, are well known for having quite a, an interesting potent effect. This is not aged. However, it is from 100 year old tea trees in the amazing terroir of Jingmai from the large leaf variety. So, you know, I think that it's gonna have some potency. Mm. It's a lovely combination of fresh in terms of those fruits, in terms of that resinous fragrance of, 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 of um, the cedar, but also very comforting, slightly ambrosial. And I would expect the more honeyed notes to accentuate through age because at the moment the indulgence is that sort of sweet milky slightly spiced milky uh, note i am getting cardamom as well middle eastern spices mm. Let's heat that water up and have another smell and i just touched this leaf and it is still fairly brittle so as suspected, it's gonna go through a lot of infusions, this leaf. Make sure that you don't break this tea open unless you are planning to sit and have a proper sesh. That smell of the wet leaf is, is very unique. It's not something that I've smelt before in terms of its balance. So we've had uh, Yunnan white teas before. We've had Silver Needles and we've had uh, the Yue Guangbai, the Moonlight White. Um, and Yunnan has a very particular style in, in terms of its taste of white tea. But mostly those teas are from sort of the Jingu area. And it's uh, not the same thing because, you know, this different terroir. So we wanted to really go to some of the poor producing terroir that we particularly love. Jing Mai obviously is one of them to find this material. We've also had white tea from Guangxi, which is again, really expresses terroir. If you go to Guangxi, then the smell in the air in Guangxi is all about orange blossom uh, and uh, jasmine. Orange blossom and jasmine, that's my recollection of Guangxi, just everywhere. The smell in that area is, is very sweet and ambrosial and sort of very uh, heavenly and, and quite um, soft. Uh, and the, the tea, the Guangxi silver needle, really, really expresses that. Um, and then you go to Fujian, which is um, made up of various different tea producing areas, but the white tea area, areas of Fuding and Zhenghe, they are, because of it, it's colder there, they are uh, a little bit more nutty and a little bit more um, uh, vegetal and a little bit more meadowy. So yeah, terroir is expressed in all teas. White tea, I'd say, ooh, look at the color. White tea, I would say, is very, very particular at expressing sort of the actual aromatic profile when you are in that mountain area. Okay. Oh, stronger. 
getting more physicality. Now I'm starting to uh, taste the fact and feel the fact that this is coming from poor tea trees, or at least tea trees that are normally made to produce poor tea. So it's still soft and sort of medium thick, but after I've swallowed, there's more of a pull, there's more of a an excitement happening, a little tingle on the front of my tongue. The flavor profile has just, volume has been turned up, so now I'm still getting all of those notes, that spiced milk, vanilla, fragrant incense, Fruit is now less of the cherry sweets and more like in pear drop territory. But candied, not fresh fruits. It tastes just like concentrated, almost like syrupy. Mmm. And there's this sort of slight movement of acidity just at the back of the of the mouth just at the back sides of the tongue it's very very brief but noticeable and probably um, would be something that would you would experience less if you cooled the temperature down but I like the fact that I'm starting to um, taste that inner leaf material a little just sort of um, glow of acidity that is probably lasts less than a couple of seconds, but that sort of adds to the juiciness and the fruitiness of this sort of pear and cherry candy. Very, very brief, less than two seconds, less than a second, just this little glow of sourness. Mm. And that dry to juicy sensation um, is moving to a very cooling, herbaceous, fresh, not menthol so much, but more like in the sort of verbena, lemon verbena sort of note, not in terms of taste, but in terms of that cooling sensation. So at the moment, I would say, that the tea is exhibiting a, a, a quite comfortable cooling uh, body sensation. But we shall see. <clears throat> We're only on the second infusion. Let me smell this Gong Dao Bei. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. So, um, it's uh, less fruity, as you'd expect, and more here. Yeah. The porcelain shows it off better. It is a combination of dark, dark raisins and dark chocolate. Like imagine like a raisin chocolate brownie, um, but very, very dark. And then moving into that freshly cut wood. And now I am getting condensed milk. So very sort of sticky, sweet milk. So, condensed milk, sawn wood, um, dark chocolate brownies and raisins. Right, we've had a couple of infusions. Oh, I should move my little frog. So we've had a couple of infusions. I want to really feel the body sensation on this because I know that that's something that uh, you're probably looking out for as well. So let me roll through some infusions and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is actually just the fourth infusion. So I thought I'd check back in because I'm really starting to feel the effects of this tea a little bit. So let's just talk about it in stages. So I'm noticing a very active sensation in my stomach. So I feel like I might want to nibble on something. I haven't had any breakfast so that, you know, I'm drinking this on an empty stomach, but definitely very active. I'm very used to drinking tea on an empty stomach, so I can sort of judge it. This is very active, very... Um, I feel like my stomach sort of gurgling and, and I think that um, in my experience, I notice the same kind of thing with quite potent pu'er teas. Um, 
the cooling sensation that we talked about earlier is still there in terms of here, in terms of my airways, right? So I'm breathing very cool, herbaceous mountain air, but there's a definite heating sensation coming through as well. But that heating sensation doesn't feel like it's sort of broken through to perspiration. It feels very contained, very sort of, it's like a building inside me. So I definitely think that this has some potency to it. This is um, the fourth infusion. I'm gonna keep rolling through them and we'll see how I fare. This is the eighth infusion. This tea is very active, at least on this session, it really feels very active. Again, this heating sensation coming through, I'm getting that cooling note in my mouth, but the heating sensation is there, but it's different. It feels different to, um, to raw pu'er tea, which tends to have more of a sort of, um, a sort of pers perspiration, like a, a heating and perspiration sensation. This one feels more excitable, heating, excitable, but not in a caffeine way. It, it, it feels different. It doesn't, it feels like it's made with larger leaf um, in the sense of not so much of those young leaves that are very caffeine rich. This has more of a, hard to put my finger on it, like a, excitable, slightly woozy, little bit, a little bit in that trippy aged white tea um, um, feeling. Definitely sort of is, is making me, I don't know, it's just, a, it's, it's, it's rewiring things in a, in a really interesting way. I feel very much like altered. I feel like, um, Yes, I can get on with my day for sure, but I'm gonna be floating through the rest of this day. That's how I feel. It feels like, um, almost like it takes your mind into a slightly more sort of detached, um, meditative, like, like more of a sort of observation. Like it's like you've risen above and you're just sort of like observing your day. It has a, it has a sort of, um, yeah, a, a feeling like it's a, a great tea, I think, to sort of almost turn off those thoughts, turn off your, like that, you know, the sort of routine thoughts that are going on in your day. It definitely pulls you out of your day to day for sure. This, there's something very different and altered about this sensation. I'm trying to sort of compare it to other teas. It definitely doesn't have the sort of rushy energy of a raw pua, but it's, it's, pretty excitable, but sort of contained and, and yeah, like th this, what's interesting is this sort of detached quality to it. This sort of like, I feel like I'm in a different space. I can't put it better than that right now. And the fact that I can't put it better than that shows you where my mind is. It's like uh, my mind doesn't want to even sort of think about, you know, how to describe it. It's just, no, just sit, be in this space. I would imagine that this would be an amazing tea to sort of sit in nature, drink, and just sort of let nature's sort of majesty, let the theater present itself to you. It's definitely not as rushy as a, as a raw pu'er, but definitely energetic as well. Woozy, Slightly trippy. I mean, I'm surrounded by bright lights. It'd be interesting to see what it's like when I sort of, you know, put like normal lights on or go outside because everything feels a bit hyper real right now. Yeah, definitely, definitely has a, a strong sensation. I wonder how it will feel after it's been aged. I mean, that could be, it could be a very, very potent tea. And the taste is just continuing to present itself with the milky, spiced milky notes, the fruitiness of, a, of, of pear candies, and that sort of resinous foresty note too. 
delicious tea. Check it out if you're interested and see what you think. That's it, tea heads. Check out our other videos. Taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye. Just stepped out into my garden. This is a good sensation. Really, really try to drink this outdoors in nature. I think it is the, oh, hello, Mr. Magpie. I think it's the ultimate sort of taking in the world tea.